For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Robert Nozick did this thing that, that if you could go into a flotation tank and you led a whole virtual life and it was the best life possible, you did exactly what you've always wanted, you became the person you wanted to be, you did the best things you could ever dream of doing and you literally couldn't tell the difference, so it was your life, okay? And you lived your biological life out in that tank and died at 80 and had the best life any person could ever have. You could pre-program it. Would you get into that tank knowing what you know now, knowing that you would have the best life ever, with no heartache, no upset, no no loved ones dying? So what's happening when, when I'm sort of having a packet of munchies? Yeah. Am I having them or are they imaginary? They're imaginary, but you can't tell the difference. It's the best packet of munchies we've ever had. I love the fact that you went into the flotation tank Right, uh, and your one proviso was, are munches as good? <laughs> yeah, No, absolutely. no, I'm, I'm just taking it back to basics. That is right. basic, You've got to yeah. pre-programme your life, that's where you'd start, is it? Munches must always taste magnificent. Well, it's just, if you can still enjoy the basic things in life, then that's yeah. when you can't you do. go wrong. You do, you enjoy them, you are the, you're the... It's the life you'd ever want to live. And yeah, you're living it. That. bit dangerous, Sorry? bit dangerous, why? why? Go on, why? Just, um, I don't know, because sometimes I think things don't happen for the best, right? Right. Sometimes you can sort of think, oh, I'll enjoy that if that happens. And then it doesn't happen, and you've had time to think about Ah, oh, but this is happened. perfect. No, this is built in, because whatever happens is for the best. So not only when you're in this flotation tank are you ha enjoying yourself, that things just keep getting better or staying so as you good. Never, you never have a bad day? You never have a bad day. But how long would that last for before you go and fed up with this? Well, why would you get fed up with it? Because you do something else. It's the perfect life. Bear in mind, you don't, you're not aware that you're in the flotation tank. You've made that deal, but then once you're in there, you don't know, you're not aware of being in the flotation tank. You're living your life and it's perfect. You're happy. Well, we don't know how you would be happy. Well, you'd just have munchies every day and... Well, yeah, you'd get in it then. You'd get in it. If you, if you don't know you've got in this tank... If I somehow go to bed at night, someone injects me in the head, and then they go, right, stick him in the tank now, and then I wake up, packet of munchies there, <laughs> sun's out, uh, Suzanne goes, oh, it's a nice day, we'll go and do something nice. And right. Go, yeah, I went to be at work. And she goes, no, I don't have to go in today. Right. Go, All right, let's go out then. Now, what's interesting there is that uh, within this scenario, I gave you any any life, you could do anything, and you chose the exact life you've got now, except Suzanne's got a day off. Now, I both love that. Well, I was a bit suspicious, of... though, that she's just taking a day off. No way, it's not happening now. It's not happening, really happening. You could do anything you like, but I like the fact now you're even questioning it and you're not in the tank, and why has Suzanne got a day off, right? <laughs> now, I love that, because that suggests to me that you're a, a nice, happy, satisfied, whatever you want to do it, contented person who's got the perfect life. However, it's almost like you haven't fully understood the possibilities. For example... You wake up, there's the munchies, sunny day, Suzanne's not at work, you go, why aren't you at work? Well, she goes off. to you, hold on though, why are you flying? And you go, I just can. But you hadn't even thought that maybe you could fly or swim or hold your breath. You just no, go no, have some but, munchies for well, breakfast. Hang on a minute, this is day one. Oh, okay. When you go on holiday, yeah. like I said before, you don't you don't turn up and go, right, it's one o'clock, jet ski for half an hour, uh, bungee jump in 40 minutes after that, yeah. let's have a nice roti, yeah. and, uh, you know, try a little cocktail. And what do you do? What do you do when you well, arrive you get, there? Well, you get there. Yeah. Uh, the fella takes your case to the room. Right. You have that panic of, am I going to give him too much money? I don't know right. the currency well enough yet. I don't know how much More things More information are. than we asked for. Yeah. No. And the most mundane... A scenario I've ever heard. No, but this is what happens in real life. Okay, you're just telling us what happens when you go on holiday. What's your point? Okay. Because you don't you don't want fun all in one go. You want to build to it because mm. that's sometimes part of it. Right. 
Yeah. Right? Okay. So anticipation. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that that little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's about things taking time, isn't it? Then looking back at the journey and going, yeah. how did I get here? Okay. Well, right. can I ask a question? Because sorry, I'm just uh, what I'm fascinated to know is if you decided to sign up to the the float tank idea. Okay. You can design your perfect life. But I'd prefer not to but, know I'm doing it. No, I'd you won't know. Would, but I you want to ask know. this question. Imagine we, Ricky and I are the doctors, okay? We can put you in this tank. You, all we need to know from you now is what your perfect life is. We're going to program it in the computer. You're going to wake up tomorrow. You won't know this conversation's happened. You'll have the perfect life. What, if you, if you don't mind, we're going to take notes now. What is the perfect life? You're still obviously living with Suzanne. We've got munchies. We've got, got munchies, munchies and we've got sunshine. But what else would you like in your magical life, of the, your ultimate life? Yeah, I, I, I don't like this idea. Suddenly, Suzanne's never at work. Uh, <laughs> I just, I just think you need, you need a bit of the badness to have the goodness. Right, right. But the difference is when I next get British gas round, they go, "Oh, Mr. Wilkinson, yes." The, the, oh my God! The boiler so is fixed. Like no, yeah, no, so your no, boiler no, no. still goes wrong in no, your dream, but, but you it gets fixed. But you don't yes. even need a boiler. You could be the perfect temperature. But this isn't the Caribbean Earth anymore. I don't. I don't like the idea of too much change. I don't want that much of a change. But you won't realise. It won't feel like change. Yeah, but it's that old chestnut, isn't it? It's the thing of like, um, what's my problem then? You've got right. the problem gene in your head. You've got to fill it with a problem. Yeah, you're not. He's not a geneticist. <laughs> got the problem hole in your head. No, it's got not. Got a problem hole in your head. Shut up, Ricky. Let him say what he he's means got, to he's, say. He's, he's got a problem it. hole in his head. He's got a problem hole in his head. It's called his mouth. Yes. Right, that is your problem hole. So, if someone comes up and they go, I fixed your boiler. Sorry, could I just ask No, one? let hey, him hey, speak. Let me ask one question, Steve. Is the problem hole different from the problem gene, or is that a new term for... You, no, you put things through the problem hole and they end up in the problem gene. You feed something in the problem hole... Is okay. that right, Carl? It goes through the problem yes. tube into the problem gene. Okay, so it's down the problem conduit. Okay, go on. Right. So it's better to have... You've got a problem hole in your head. Right? Yeah. So you stuff in a problem problems. into a problem hole. Okay, yeah, goes. okay. Now, all the little problems can't get in because of the big problem. <laughs> right. right. Is that good or bad? It's but that's not true, is it? The problem hole is a standard size on everyone. <laughs> right. 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 No, but that's Shut not... up, Ricky. Let uh, him explain. Now, now, Ricky, I'd say, is problems... Uh, and not even problems. Well, how big's his problem hole? Same size as mine. Same size right, as okay. yours. But his problems are all little ones. They're like you've got like a, a load of skittles. I've got a big cream egg. <laughs> right, but why? Shut what, up! Let what, him but, speak. But, He's but, just but, expanding on his idea. Why? But do you what keep is his judging? problem? What is your problem that's so okay. big compared to my little skittles? Loads of problems. You you get stressed out about things that I'm like, what's up with you? You get annoyed easily with stuff. People chewing loudly, or someone breathing <laughs> loudly, or someone coughing. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, oh, that doesn't matter. Like you say, to you, the boiler is like, get it ripped out, put a new one in. It's not as easy as that. <laughs> it is. And that's why the problem ball is growing. <laughs> it's a bo it's got a gene, a ball, and a hole. So the problem there's, ball... No wonder there's no fucking room for a brain. Right, shut up. Let me ask... <laughs> I want to clarify this. The problem ball <laughs> exists in life. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It has to go through the problem hole, <laughs> down the problem tube, into the problem, into the problem gene. problem gene. Right, now then. Now then. So you've got the problem ball. Everyone's problem hole is the same size. Okay. But some people's problems are smaller, so they can slip straight into the problem hole. I've got a question, Stephen. Wait, wait. And listen, has anyone got, has anyone got a pair of problem balls? <laughs> or is it always just... Can ladies have prob a pair of problem balls? No, because Hitler had one uh, problem ball, didn't he? But... Uh, c could anyone ever have a pair of problem balls? Is my question to you. But and some people's problem balls are much bigger than another man's or another woman's, right? Yeah, right. depending on the problem. So you right. could have you could you, have, you could have a pair of problem balls and one problem hole. The way I'm if saying you, it, if you, okay, no, 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 suppose I came to you and said, listen, well, um, but a man uh, starving in a foreign country might yeah. have huge problem balls. He might have, but if I went to a doctor and said I've got a problem I'd, hole, and the doctor said, well, let me see it. And I, you know, he said, well, let me see your problem hole. And, he, and, and, and hanging down in front of my problem hole was a huge pair of problem balls. What would he treat first, is my question. Well, would he look into the problem hole? He said, right, he'd say, right, take your problem genes off. <laughs> right? <laughs> I want to see your problem hole oh. clearly. But he would fish, he would put his hand or his finger into the problem hole to try and remove the problem he ball. He would. Wouldn't he? Well, 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 he'd, he'd, well, he could feel the problem balls, but he'd have to insert his finger into the problem hole, wouldn't he? Right. Okay, so... So, Carl, go on then. I'll just get in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do towards enjoying your life? 
I don't normally enjoy the thing when I'm doing it. It's after. It's like that holiday. When I what was do you on mean holiday. you don't enjoy the thing when you're doing it? It's after. What's an example of not enjoying the thing at the moment, but you do after? You didn't enjoy the holiday. Say but like the holiday. I've just so been you enjoy coming off holiday. What? Let, I want to hear it. You, you enjoy the holiday. You didn't when, enjoy the when holiday. When I'm there, I had fleas biting me. Yeah. I had mosquitoes biting me. Yeah. Uh, there was a funny smell of damp in the bathroom. I was worrying, getting in the sea, thinking, is the stone fish in it? <laughs> Right? Now you've yeah. got all that going on. Yeah. When you get back, you forget about the damp smell. You forget well, about you the fleas because the bites have gone. They're not as much of a problem. Yeah. So then your brain starts going, well, hang on, what did I enjoy? And you go, I enjoyed the Dorada fish I had that I've never eaten. Yeah. That's an experience. At the time, I wasn't enjoying it because I'm thinking, when I get back, I'm going to have fleas on me again. Yeah. Now, when I get a menu given to me in a restaurant, yeah. I go, right, what am I going to do here? Yeah. Right, well, when I came here, I thought I'd have some lamb chops. They've got lamb chops, great. Wonder how much to give you because I quite fancy this pudding they've got. Right. Now I have the lamb chops. It comes with extra veg. I eat it. I enjoy it. The pudding I wanted. It's gone out the window. I've got no room for it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you enjoyed the lamb chops. But you enjoyed the lamb chops. You enjoyed. You can only so get packed so much. Enjoy. If you're enjoying all, all your life all the time, there's no point in regretting anything. That's just greed. No, but I was looking forward to the pudding. Well, you shouldn't have eaten all the veg. Yeah, but I was enjoying it at that point. But then you take the pleasure that you had at that point. No, because yeah. I wanted a pudding. Yeah, but, you... but you didn't want a pudding, or you've had a pudding. No, because I would have had it for the sake of having it. Yeah, and but... then it's, it's yeah, ruined. But I don't know what the whinge is there. You had a lovely meal, you had some lovely lamb chops, you enjoyed the hour. Because when I read that they had, a, a, like, profiteroles on there, yeah. I thought, I fancy a couple of them. Yeah, and, and then... It, you... And the chance has gone, I'm probably not coming back to this, this restaurant now. Yeah, but you haven't I've... missed a chance, you had the chance, you didn't want to take it because you were full up with lovely lamb. It's What's not the like problem? You I had a spicy sausage. In the <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, the, th the problem was, Go I on. was enjoying it, but I thought, this is, this is the spiciest sausage I've ever eaten. Right. <laughs> now, I could only enjoy that <laughs> the next day night when I knew that it's the gone through my body, there hasn't been a problem. So I'd go, that was a nice sausage, I'd have one of them again. Right. <laughs> But then the next time, surely you'd be enjoying it because you wouldn't have the trauma of the next night because you'd live through it and now you're just enjoying the, the lovely problem... spiciness and the sausageness of the spicy sausage. Yeah, but the problem is, once you've enjoyed something, it's very difficult to replace what you got from that spicy sausage the first time. Then why are you looking forward to having another one? Because let me tell you... Go on. Auntie Nora, I've told you she prepares all her food, mm. right? She's got them all in bags in a freezer, Monday, mm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Right. Um, now... She, what she normally does, she makes a big pot of curry. Mm. Right. She goes, what I'll do, I'll pop that in the Monday bag and I'll pop it in the Thursday bag. Mm. It's the same curry. Now, she has it on the Monday. Yeah. She loves it. She right. thinks, I got the mix just right there. The spices yeah. are good. The yeah. chicken was tasty. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I can't wait for Thursday. Yeah. Right. I'll call her up on the Thursday evening. I'll go, how was the curry that you had on Monday that you said you were having again on Thursday that you enjoyed? Didn't enjoy it. Mm. Why is that? Don't know. Just want the same. She was expecting too much, and that's the problem. If I had that mm. spicy sausage again, yeah. it's never going to live up to it. So forget the spicy sausage. I've had it. I've experienced it. So you never someone know says, one. "Well, it depends." So do you have anything twice ever? Maybe Jesus. not. But this is insane, Carl. Yeah. Because well, aside from you and your auntie Norma, and presumably all the other Pilkington clan, or all as weird as one another, why you phone her up and ask her what she's having for tea? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. What, that that shows not you only the, what is happening on Monday, yeah. what you're going to do on Thursday as well. Make, that, I'll make a note of it in the auntie Norma <laughs> the food diary. <laughs> that's proof that you really aren't enjoying your life. Now, <laughs> exactly. To go right, oh fucking. Well, hell, what what else gonna, you say? But then he's people. phoning her up again late on the Friday to find out how the Thursday curry went down. I know exactly. Yeah, that's two calls. Unbelievable. That well, it's just just read her journal. Now the question is, is it better? to enjoy something once and not again than not at all. But you're an idiot because you you're the only person who experiences this. That's not the choice. Th that's not the choice for normal people. You can either never enjoy summer or only enjoy it once. You can enjoy things loads of times. No, you can't. That's what a hobby is. A hobby is enjoying things over and over again. I haven't got a hobby, ever. That's why. I've had loads of hobbies in the past. I did the dancing. I did the boxing. I did, uh, what else have I done? Mm. That is it. I think that's what. But, but but that's what I'm saying. Though. I soon get bored, and that's it's like how you enjoy. You know, I love munchies. Yeah. But I always enjoy the last one more than. Well, that doesn't make sense. That goes c totally counter to your argument. No, because it's from one packet. What? It's from one packet. What difference does that make? The so first you, one's surely so, your favourite. No, so hold on. Not. So if you do have one munchie, I'll right, go okay, as a munchie, mate. You no. go. I'm not going to take one unless I can have all of them, in, uh, particularly the last one. Um, 
But what is... Well, no, I'd like to have them all, please. What? No, no, you can't have them all. Don't be so greedy. Have, have one munchie. Have the first munchie. There but you I'm go. I'm going to have one, and I'm, I'm going to get a taste for them, and I'll, I'll probably want another. Well, no, that, they're my munchies, though, aren't they? Oh, I'll keep want... them, then. Forget it. Well, look, so you'd rather have no munchies than one munchie? I'll go and buy a packet. I'd prefer, I'd prefer to go, do you know what? I fancy a packet of them. But why do you, <laughs> enjoy, the la- okay, then why do you enjoy the last munchie more than the first? Whereas you, know you enjoy the, the first one. curry, but not the second curry. But you know curry. it's the last one. Because it's, no, because I'm eating them all in one sitting. I'm not going, that's for Monday, that's for Tuesday, that's for Wednesday. I'm right. talking about a packet of munchies. Right. I eat them. There's probably about 12 in a packet. Okay. I shove the first four in without even thinking what I'm eating. Really fast. <laughs> Without right. even thinking about what right. I'm eating. Yeah. Now, th- then, when you're getting towards the end, you make them last more, you might bite the top of them. You look what's inside them, you go, oh, I'm liking this. But you know, hold on, what, one? every time? What, every time you buy a packet of munchies? Yeah. It? Yeah. So, hold on, though, you must enjoy a packet of munchies regularly, then? Not as often as you think. You well, I don't know. <laughs> well, as often as I think, I don't know. So, tell me how often you enjoy a packet of munchies. Normally after, a, sort of, maybe once a month. So, every month, you look forward to a lovely packet of munches. And the same experience. Yeah, you like at the, the first end, one. I like the last one. The only thing you know you enjoy, look forward to enjoy, and it fulfils all those expectations, is a fucking packet of munches once a month. Fuck me. What do you think happiness is? Um, again, you, you only know the happiness... Because of the badness. You've well, got to have a yin and a yang. Well, I know what you mean there. I, I, I agree with you on this because it, it's sort of no good to be handed it on a plate. I mean, just tr- just from my own experience, working for someone does feel better because you've got, a, you've got a pride and a satisfaction. I genuinely think it's better to start a business, struggle, go bust, come back, than win the lottery. Yeah. I genuinely believe that. But you need, you need the mixture, don't you? So you so you find out what you what your favourite thing is. It's like a bag of revels. Yeah, but you can't you can't cherish guilt or shame. Did you just say you? life is like a bag of revels? Isn't that dangerously close to life's like a box of chocolates? In Forrest Gump over there, yeah. Jesus, no, but, it, but it is, isn't it? There's there's one or two in there that I don't like. Like what? The raisin. The raisin no, 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 no. With, with chocolate. Yeah, no, no. Now what no, I'm saying metaphorically, is metaphorically. What, what's the? Like, yeah, well, I'm actually I'm using, named what revel he doesn't like. Yeah, well, I'm telling you because it works in life. Go on then. But the revel you like is raisins? there. Well, well, maybe, if you have enough raisin ones, you eventually go, do you know what? They're not that bad. What? And that's the thing in life. What would you have written to Jim will fix it to fix for you? What would have given you pleasure as a kid? Dear Jim, can you fix it for me to do what? (sighs) Uh, When I watched Jim will fix it as a kid, they never really lived up to what the kid wanted. Did they? But what would you have requested? But I don't think I would because I think I saw how disappointed most of the oh, kids were. Oh God! It's a kid exhausting. like whistling. They brought out this Roger Whittaker. <laughs> yes, because they look at it. And they go, "Can you fix it for me to go into space?" No. Can I dance with Banana Rama? No problem. That's the ones they pick. Yeah. So that's I mean? why I wouldn't write in because whatever you ask for, you're always going to get a watered down version. But if Jim could fix it for you to do anything, what would you have chosen? There's not many things I wanted as a kid. One thing. Just one thing. To choose one thing, please. That my name was Brett. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, fuck it now! It's not unbelievable! (laughs) I mean, it's extraordinary. There is no predicting that. (laughs) Okay, you know what? I can make that dream come true for you right now, Brett. We can just call you Brett from now on. Not a problem, Brett. Brett Pilkington. It sounds good. I love the fact that it's the Carl bit he wants to replace, not the fucking Pilkington. No, but Pilkington. that doesn't work either, because, like, then... Well, I not, told, Brett? Because I told, okay. me, I told me mum and dad that that's what I wanted. They started calling me that, but then I forgot they, that. What, they went along with it? Yeah. So you said, mum, dad, call me Brett from now on. And they went, all right. Yeah, but then I, I kept forgetting that I was Brett, so I wasn't answering, so they went back to Carl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> So you've had that dream come true. Yeah, and it wasn't that good. And that's what I'm saying to you. Things never live up to what you want. Dreams, what are they? (laughs) When I was on holiday recently... Yeah. I got talking to an old fella. Mm. Because where where I went, it's mainly for old people. Mm -hmm. Um, I got chatting with him. Uh, You could tell he had a lot of money. Yeah. He sort of tanned. He had um, that sort of um, rouge-coloured sort of jeans oh yeah which is always sort Tell-tale of telltale sign it's, it's kind of like he's got money 
Yeah. And um, the uh, red jeans are twice as much there. That's okay. I've got money. Yeah, it's sort of it's either that colour or yellow, but you yeah. can carry it off when you're an old man, and especially with the tan, you think, yeah, he's got a few. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a millionaire. Do you have any yellow jeans? Uh, we've got one pair, sir. But they're no the most expensive. Yeah, they're, they're in the back room. Um, uh, can I just see your your bank account first? There is. Oh, yeah. You can afford yellow jeans, right, sir? Come this way. So I got talking to him, and it turns out he had a uh, cruise ship. Right. Loads of money. Mm. Now, I was chatting to him for about ten minutes. Yeah. What so colour was his jacket? Said very, he didn't have a jacket on, just a white shirt. Mm. He's wearing red jeans and a white shirt. Yeah, sort of leather, leather slip-on shoes that I can remember. And um, how old is he? It's hard to tell because he, he was well tanned. Right. Um, was he an attractive man? He's a good-looking fella. Um, so he's rich. So you saw this rich, good-looking bloke with just a shirt on. Oh, he had a shirt and his his pink yeah. pants. His pink so, pants, and he okay. just went over. Well, and you I, don't a conversation with him. I don't know. Why did you notice his, what um, kind of the crotch area was? Why did you notice what you were looking the, very much at the eyes? I, I the can see why you could see if you're looking at his face, you could see a white shirt. But why could you see you what colour the you. fabric around his this testicles is what I'm were? You saw you. a good-looking old man sat at the bar. You went up and bought him a drink. Right? Yeah, you, oh, so, you I was noticed for the barbecue to open. Right. right. Okay. And you I got noticed there the man. So you, <laughs> so you noticed the man's trousers. No. Yeah. No. I was annoyed. I don't like late nights on holiday. Okay. Jet lag. Suzanne said, let's go down there early tonight. Right. I get there, I find out the barbecue's not for another 40 odd minutes. What time was the it? The holiday rep. Uh, well, I don't know, it starts at 8. Well, you're, so noticing I have to wait people, for you're noticing old men's uh, genital coverings, but you don't know what fucking time it is. Yeah, but. Get your I'm story saying, straight. What I'm saying to you is the right. reason I noticed his pants is because what he was talking about, right. there was no reference points. I didn't have a clue what he was going on about. Right. He what was he talking about for your eyes to wander down to his penis, is what I'm trying to say. What made you look at his penis? Because I got bored. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. What I'm trying to say to you is, yeah. is, is reference points. I had no idea and what, what was, he was he going talking on about. When you're talking to a stranger, mm. aren't you meant to keep it... Above the waist. Keep it... Uh, Looking at his bollocks. Keep it... Erect. <laughs> <laughs> I made Carl laugh. <laughs>